Mm. You touched on it there, what happened in 89 then at Hillsborough. And like Jason, you grew up around the area, you played for the club, mm. you're still around the area. Like one of the reasons why Kenny is so revered at Merseyside is not just his brilliance as a player, it is what he has done for the city, uh, more so than ever since Hillsborough and his work with the families. It, it's, you know, for you to talk about Kenny, and because you'll have met a lot of those families, you'll have seen his work around the club, it, it really is quite incredible what he's done through the years. Yeah, I, I wasn't playing football professionally when it happened. I was actually working in a pub um, and I was on the afternoon shift and I was waiting in the bar and the telly was was on. And back then it was just, it was grandstand and, you know, they were going backwards and forwards uh, to the ground. It was kind of un, unknown. I had friends and family who were, who were at the game who'd gone down. Lots of people from the pub, a lot of the lads had gone down. And, um, you know, obviously it was coming through the enormity and the, and the devastation. And, you know, I, I always remember the pub clearing out, like everyone going and no one being left in there. And then over the next few days, you know, different stories about, about people who had passed away and people we knew. I, I played football with the two trainer boys who, who sadly passed away and I knew them very well. And you see all the communities come together and kind of everything becomes irrelevant. And then you see the, you see the players and then Kenny, you know, all at the funerals and stuff. And, You've got nothing but appreciation and you admire them for, for what they have to do. And Kenny said before, I think Liverpool and its fans have always had a special relationship. Mm. Um, we show humility, but we also show support and they showed their human side. You know, they, they were looked upon as, as gods and great players and legends. But, you know, through adversity, I think people can see the character of the human being and all them players and Kenny, what they did, only they can tell you how they felt and, you know, everyone's appreciative of, of what they did and, and what they're doing now still. You know, I, I'm very good friends with John Aldridge and I still right. see him get upset by it and they're all the same. And, and it was brilliant. It was, it was amazing what they did. It was just amazing. When you talk about the footballing side there, Jason, like it's still hard to get your head around that it's sort of six weeks later, Kenny, that the Michael Thomas goal happens and Arsenal mm. win the league. And you have so much context at that time for football's place in life. It felt as had a more of an importance for the people of the city for something to get behind them with the cup final. For you though, uh, those games that came afterwards, how difficult was it to, to give them any level of importance considering everything that you, the club, the city had been going through over the previous months? No, we got, we got success at Wembley. They beat Everton 3-2 mm. after the extra time at Wembley. Then uh, we came back with the trophy and did a wee bit with the trophy uh, around about the hospital in, in Liverpool. On the Tuesday, we were playing West Ham, Tuesday night. Uh, we beat them 5 1, but it was, it was never a 5 1 game. We, were, we scored three goals later on, and we were lucky to come away 5 1 winners. And that's why there was a big goal, well, there was a two goal difference going into the game on the Friday. And to be fair, the boys were running on empty uh, because of the emotion of playing it in the cup final, because of the extra time, because playing against West Ham, uh, knowing that you couldn't afford to lose if you wanted to win the league, or the drain, or the energy drained out them, and then they come to the game on the Friday, uh, and they were really running against a brick wall. And to get that close was a fantastic, a fantastic effort for the boys. Um, Arsenal deserved to win the league because mm. they get more goals than us. The goal difference was better, whatever it was. So th there's no way that we can get away from that. But and there's no in hindsight or trying to be clever. If there was a trophy that was more important to the people of Merseyside that year, it was the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. So they could have a bit of solace for themselves, everybody that. At least we got what we wanted to get, or what was most important. And that was probably the only year that the FA Cup meant less. It went, meant more than the, the league championship. Mm. But mean, that's not to take away. That's not to take away Arsenal's um, ability to win it. There's obviously been a lot of developments in recent years with independent reports, with the inquests, and you'll have spent as much time as anyone with families over the last few years. Have you got a sense that people are getting some sort of peace, some sort 
closure isn't the right word because there'll never be closure, but that everything that's happened over the last few years is giving a little bit of peace to the families? Well, every family will have a different um, idea of what, what they think is satisfactory outcome mm. for themselves. So as long as you've got that, then it'll always remain open. And you can't blame the families for having different ideals, which is right and what's wrong, because everybody's different. And they have been unbelievably representative uh, of the people of Liverpool and stood up for the supporters of Liverpool Football Club. And they, they are the ones that, that are the heroes, really. They're the ones that have been through the mill since 89 and everything that they had to do for, for their families and, and the way that they fought hard for the justice and anything and anybody else, myself included, we were only support acts. They, they supported us for years and years. It was their turn to be supporters. And we tried our best to do a little bit to make them feel a bit better and help them along the way. But they, they are always are the, the biggest player in any of this. Nothing to do with Nobody did it for anything, any personal gain. They did it because it's the right thing to do. Mm. And if you can't help people less fortunate than yourself, we've all got a problem. Has the way that you and your family have dealt with it changed in recent years as well? There's been a documentary, there have been <clears> quite a few public interviews where as a family you seem to have spoken quite openly. Do you talk about it now in, in a different way to maybe you were even 10, 15, 20 years ago? My family? Mm. Oh, it's... it's uh, <clears throat> I don't, no, it still has the same meal. It still re resonates with. Um, two of the kids were there. Kelly was yeah. there. Paul was there. Um, but we were fortunate. We never, we never suffered in any way, shape or form for being at the game physically. Mentally, I would have thought so. Uh, but they could come home and there's a lot of, lot of people keeping. So, as I say, the, the more, most important thing is They've had some a few positive results in recent years of families, and if they've got some outstanding ones, then let's hope they're successful, and let's hope they can push onwards and upwards, and get on with this. Some people been punished. Um, the, the judgment's been made on them. So if there's some more to come out, then fine. But for what they did for their families, for their loved ones, it was unbelievable. To sacrifice what 25 years or of their life is unbelievable. So the same it is here, or the credit. Mm. The leaving of Liverpool, Kenny, is well documented after that dramatic Merseyside derby. What are we, 30 years on now from, from that almost, of the initial leaving of Liverpool. When you look back, did it simply have to happen? Was there no way that you could have avoided leaving at that time? Did you just need that break? Yep. <coughs> just... A rest and that was be it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, for me, it, it might have came at the wrong time. We were top of the league. Uh, made my mind up before the the Everton game, which confirmed that it was the right decision I was making. Mm. Uh, and I had to, it was it was no way. I just run out of gas, and you run out of gas. It's I'm doing nobody any favors. Uh, least of all the club, uh, more importantly the family as well. So for me, it was the right thing to do. Yeah, Jason, what are your memories of of that time and and that era when uh, all was changing for Liverpool when Kenny is finishing up, Graham Souness is coming in? You're just starting out as a professional footballer at that stage. Yeah, I'm just making a way in the game. Yeah, still a massive fan, still going the games. Um, you know, I've become friends with a couple of the players as well. Obviously, as a community, we were all still hurting about what went on. And, you know, I think we all understood Kenny's decision. Um, you know, as fans, we were devastated by his decision to, to leave. But I was young as well, so I didn't really understand it too much. And I wasn't as emotionally attached as what Kenny was, obviously. But, you know, as I've grown up and realised mental health and, and what such, I can understand completely why. But at the time... You know, as a fan, you, you're wondering what's going to go on and it's a fresh start and Graham tries to change sort of the ethics and the philosophy of the football club. So you're just watching intently what's going on. And, uh, you know, I was there 
Bristol City on the cop when unfortunately they were beaten and Graham got sacked. And um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was just that time for me when I was just making my way into professional football at Bolton. You can't have been happy then as a Bolton player when he rocked up at Blackburn. <laughs> Who can he yeah. <laughs> coming back? Um, no, well, uh, you know, I, I said before, you know, there's been a lot of discussions about Melwood and, and sad times. One of the saddest times for me was when Roy Evans resigned when Gerard Houllier come in and he come into the, the Melwood uh, dressing room, the porter cabin, and he said he was leaving and there was tears and ev- the whole the whole place was just in tears. Every player, Neil Ruddock, everyone was in tears. Um, and Don Hutchinson tells the same story of Kenny. And, you know, I think when, when players talk about, I know Kenny's on with us, but when players talk affectionately about their emotions towards a manager, it just tells you a lot about how much he's liked, what kind of a man he is. And, you know, you want him back in the game. You know, if he comes back in the game and he's managing Blackburn, then it's great to have Kenny Daglish back in football. It, you know, managing Blackburn, how he does remains to be seen. You know, can he replicate what he's done? Mm. Who knows? But just to have him back in football, you know, it was great. And as I said, he was my hero. So I was I was made up to see him just back. And, um, yeah, and, you know, he, he didn't probably, you know, make a success of what he did at Liverpool, but he was still successful at Blackburn. He still, you know, still won the league. Um, and what have you so yeah it was brilliant to see him back 